Well, I want to welcome you today as we jump into this or jump back into uh, this series, The Principle of the Path, something that we shared some time ago that I hope is a blessing to you that propels you and moves you from where you are to where God wants you to be by embracing, by understanding this principle called the principle of the path. Some time ago, I I shared a a story with you all uh, where I I got lost one night. And uh, I'll kind of quickly run through it, but this was some years ago. This was before cell phones and and before GPSs and cars and all of that stuff. These were the MapQuest days. Anybody remember MapQuest days? Some of you are like, MapQuest? The MapQuest days where you, you would go on the computer. We thought we were high tech, right? We'd go on the computer, put in our destination, hit a button, a piece of paper come out. we walk into the car with our MapQuest directions. And uh, those are back in the day. Somebody said, I still do it. All right. <laughs> All right. But, um, so, so, but this, was, this was before the whole cell phone and all that other good stuff. And one night, uh, it was late one night, it was after a service, and the, the preacher was uh, finished, and he lived in Philadelphia and needed a ride back home to Philadelphia. And so I either volunteered or got volunteered. I don't remember how it went. So I was the one designated driver. I was going to drive him back to Philadelphia. I'm saying, what's the big deal? It's just Philadelphia. I can take him to Philadelphia and get him there and then get back home. And so I drive him. It's already late. It had to be probably a little after 11 already, but I get him home, get him there. And he says, hey, listen, here's how you get back to the highway, get back home. Make a left here, make a right here, make another turn there, go down. You make that turn and you're back, you're back on the highway, you're back home. I got you, man. I got no problem pull out of the driveway. I'm making a right. I'm making a left. I'm making another left. At the Wawa, I'm making a right. I remember him mentioning the Wawa, but I'm making a right at the Wawa. I'm making a left here. I'm turning. I'm turning. I'm turning and turning and turning. About four or five hours later, I realize I'm not on the right road. Something went terribly wrong in this whole process. And, 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 and there was a point where I was lost and you know what I decided to do? Some of you may, may, may have experienced this. I decided to drive faster. I'm figuring if I drive faster, I'm going to get there. Somehow, by me driving at 85 miles per hour opposed to the 65 miles per hour, I'm going to get to where I'm going sooner. I want you to know that that method doesn't work. Doesn't, when you're going the wrong way, it doesn't matter how fast you're going, you're still going the wrong way. Long story short, I finally uh, found my, got my bearings, got on the right road, got home. It was morning time now. I walk, I get in, walk into the house, my wife picks up her head and she starts asking me just questions. You know, it's the, where have you been? This was my response. I could not say a word. <laughs> I couldn't, I could not open. I was so tired and so frustrated and so worn out. No, I, I just, I cannot talk. I got in the bed, slipped into a coma for about the next 10 hours. And when I got up, I was able to debrief her and let her know everything that happened that night. But there were some lessons as I reflect on that time of being lost, there were some lessons that I reflected on that I learned from being lost. And I want to share a couple of them with you. The first thing that I, that I learned as I reflect on this uh, about being lost is driving faster doesn't get you there any faster. As a matter of fact, it gets you further away from where you want to be faster. And a lot of times when we get lost, what we do is we try to push even harder or try to move even faster. And really what you're doing is if you're going the wrong way and you're pushing harder or moving faster, you're just getting further away from where you need to be at a faster pace. Moving faster doesn't help when you're lost and you're going in the wrong direction. Another lesson that I learned was no matter how much you pray, 
speak in tongues, cry, quote scriptures, if you're heading in the wrong direction, you'll be heading in the wrong direction, praying, speaking in tongues, quoting scriptures, and crying. And a lot of times that's what happens, right? We'll be heading in the wrong direction. We'll be going the wrong way. We'll be wanting to end up one place, but we're on the wrong road. And we think that if we just pray over it, that makes everything okay. We think that if we put a scripture over it, that makes it okay. You know what I'll do is I'll speak in tongues over it. I'll sing over it. I'll dance over it. But guess what? If you're going the wrong way, you'll just be doing that while you're singing and dancing and pouring oil and doing all of those things. But you'll still be going in the wrong direction. How many times have we gone down the wrong road and just slapped Jesus' name on it? Yep, this is the will of God for my life. No, it isn't. But you think by saying it's the will of God for your life that the wrong path will somehow miraculously become the right path. And it doesn't. It doesn't. And I've learned that the hard way because there were a few tears as I was riding down that highway and a few prayers going up. But guess what? If you're on the wrong path, you're on the wrong path. Another lesson that I learned was the only way you can get to where you intend to go is by getting on the road that leads to that destination. You're like, that's pretty obvious, Pastor Leo. But so many of us miss that point. The only way that you'll get to where you intend to go is by getting on the road that leads to that destination. So many times we, we, we think that, you know what, I've done this. I'm sure some of you have done this. My wife, she doesn't get lost. My wife is a human GPS system. I was sharing, um, we, were, we were in Connecticut um, yesterday and we were driving around and so we had to go to a couple different places. And so we went to see her cousin and then from there we were going to go into Waterbury to see her aunt. And so we're leaving the place, and so it was just a couple of turns off of the highway to get to where we were, so I didn't bother to put the GPS on to get back to the highway. I'm like, it's just a couple of turns. So I'm riding down the street, and I got that look. Mo, I got that look like I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing. I got this. It's just a couple of turns. So I'm riding down the street, riding down the street, riding down the street, riding down the street, and then I hear my wife scream, you know that's the turn right there. Yeah, I know that's the turn right there. Straight up line. Sean, straight up line. Straight up line. Uh, yeah, I know that's the turn right there. So I make the turn. And, and here's the thing about it. We had never been to this desk. We had never been to this place before. And, and, and we, the only thing we did was we just followed the GPS to get there. Sean, when we're making turns, my wife is calling out the street names. Osgood should be coming up right here. I'm like, what? You memorize the streets on the way here? So we make the turn, and I'm going down, and then I'm just about to miss the next turn. My wife's like, you know we turn? Yeah, yeah, I got this. You know, now I'm getting an attitude. I'm straight lost, but I got an attitude. Like, I got this, woman. Where we turn the next? No. But she has a way of just being able to, to just figure out and, and, and just even memorize. But that's not, that's not me. But so many times when we get lost, what we do is sometimes we'll pull into a gas station, and we'll want a quick fix. Listen. I want you to tell, I, this, here's where I am, and here's where I need to be. Well, you got to do, no, 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 I don't want all that. I just want to be at my destination. You ever get, you just want to be at your destination? I just want to get there. And we want a quick fix from getting from where we are to where we need to be. But the only way, the only thing that they can give you that's going to help you is only thing that is point you or put you on the road that will lead to the destination that will get you there. And so many times we want, to, we, want to, we want a quick fix. You know what? I don't want to do the hard work. I don't want to be patient. I don't want to be disciplined. Just tell me what I need to do so that I can blink my eyes and get to the destination that I intended to be at or that I desired to be at. I don't want to have to travel down this, this road. But it doesn't work that way. The only way that you'll get to your intended destination, the place that you want to get to, is you're going to have to get on the path, on the road that leads to that destination. And then uh, the, the, the last lesson that I, that I learned there uh, about being lost is if you've been lost and you finally get on the right road, 
It's going to take you some time to get to where you want to be. Let me say that again. I was lost out there, heading, to, heading home from Philadelphia, driving fast. But guess what? If you drove three hours out of the way, guess what you got to do to get back on the way? And that was three hours out of the way. That didn't even include the hour commute that I had to go back. And so many times what happens is we get back on the road, somebody shows us the road, but then we don't want to stay on it long enough because we felt like we've wasted so much time already. And so, and so be, because we get impatient, because we don't want to take the time to travel on that road to get to where we want to go, you know what ends up happening with a lot of us? We end up wasting more time. But the only way you're going to get there is you've got to be willing to get on that path and then be willing to put in the time. Would you shout time? The principle of the path is this simple and this clear. It's your destination is determined by the direction you're heading in. Let me say that again. Your destination is determined by the direction you're heading in. It makes, makes you're like, this is, this is common sense, right? Direction determines destination. Would you say that with me? Direction determines, one more time. Direction determines destination. That's it. The direction you're heading in determines destination. And the same thing that's true geographically in that roads have predictable destinations, the same thing is true in life. There are paths that you choose that have very predictable destinations based on the direction that that path is heading in. There are very predictable health paths. There are predictable relationship paths. There are predictable financial paths. There are predictable educational paths. There are predictable career paths. Depending on the path you're on, we can tell where you're going to end up. Isn't it funny sometimes when you run into somebody? It's not really funny. It's sometimes it's mostly sad. You run into somebody who says, you know what? I've been eating poorly for the past 10, 15, 20 years. I haven't been exercising. I haven't been getting enough sleep. I haven't been taking good care of myself. And my doctor just gave me a horrible report and says my health is, in, is just in a terrible place. I don't understand how I got here. Every decision you make is connected. Every decision you make is creating a path for your life. But we think that, you know what, what I did 10 years ago has no bearings on where I am today. You know where you are today? Based on the decisions that you made yesterday and the day before that and the day before that. It's created paths for your life. Or, or you, run into, you run into somebody who says, you know what, I've been, in, I've been living on credit cards. I've just been running up credit card debt for the past 10 years. I've been overspending. I'm not saving a dime. And, and I'm in financial shambles. I don't know how I got here. I don't know why the creditors are, are calling me. I don't know why I'm in such debt. I don't know why I'm stressed out over my finance. I don't know why I can't get ahead. And you're looking over their shoulder at the path. And you're saying, well... Didn't you see this coming? Don't, didn't you know that living on credit card debt, overspending, not saving, you didn't know where that path was going to end? And the truth of the matter is most of us know where that path is going to end, but none of us believe that we're going to end up there. We think that we're going to be the exception to that path. Or, you know, that person who says, you know what, I've, I've, I, you know, the student says, you know, I don't, I don't know what's up with this university. They just put me on pro, pro, academic probation. Well, really? Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. I, I, didn't, I didn't go to too many classes. I, I hit every party. 
Um, I, I missed a few assignments here and there and didn't do so well on my exams because I didn't have time to study. I was too busy doing all the other stuff. And they're wondering how they ended up in this place. And it's pretty obvious. And so many times, you know what the interesting thing is? So many times the people around you can see so clearly where you're heading. And many times we ignore the truth of our situation. We ignore the real road that we're on because in our hearts, here's we want to be financially fit. In our hearts, we want to have a great relationship. In our hearts, we want to do well in school. It's our intention. It's our desire to have all these things. But I want you to know the path that you're on trumps all of that. I had the best of intentions. My intentions were, believe me, to get to New Jersey. My heart was pure for New Jersey. My desire was for New Jersey. I loved New Jersey at about 2 o'clock in the morning. I wanted nothing but New Jersey. But if you're on the wrong path, it trumps all of that. And so, so many of us, we're on the wrong path, but our hearts, are, our intentions, and we really desire this. This is what we really want. But if you're not on the right path, you'll never get there just based on intentions and desires and wanting. The path trumps it all. The thing about the principle of the path is it can either work for you or work against you. And my desire is that you understand this principle so that you can use it for your advantage. You can use it to propel you to the place that you want to be, that God desires for you to be in your life, in all of the different paths of your life. And here's the thing. Principles are different from laws, right? Laws you can break and may not even suffer any harm, right? Some of you, how many of you broke the law on the way here? Nobody, now you want to lie, now you want to lie, right? If you broke the speed limit, right, but you didn't get a ticket, you're like, it's all good. It's all good in the neighborhood. No damage done, nobody's hurt, Every, we got here safely, it's all good, nobody got a ticket, I'm good. Principles aren't that way. Principles are always working in the background in your, of your life, whether you know it or not. Some of you are like, man, I never thought about the principle of the path, but it's been working in your life. You, you, are, you are where you are now because of the principle of the path. And so whether you believe it or not, whether you accept it or not, whether you adhere to it or not, whether you harness it and use it to your advantage or not, it's still working in the background of your life. Have you ever heard of the principle of sowing and reaping? You ever hear that principle? And so whether you believe it or not, whether you ascribe to it or not, whether it's working in the background of your life, and it's either working to your advantage or to your disadvantage. The farmer, he, he has a field, and he can say, you know what? Everybody else is planting seed. I don't feel like planting, but I'm going to show up at harvest time to reap a crop, just like everybody else, because, hey, who doesn't want a crop? Well, guess what? What you don't sow, you can't, you can't reap. It's a principle. Well, I don't believe in the principle of sowing and reaping. Okay, don't sow. Let's see what happens. And the opposite is true, right, of that as well. What you sow, you will, you will reap. And so if you start sowing romance and kindness and love and patience in your relationships, guess what you're going to reap? Y'all don't want to say it. The list was too long? I mean, what is it? I mean, just let me know. If you sow romance and kindness and patience and faithfulness and all this in your relationship, what are you going to reap? Romance and kindness and patience and faith and all these, that's what you'll, that's what you'll reap. And if you, if you sow envy and strife and arguing and backbiting, guess what you'll reap? Well, you'll get cut one or the other, I don't know. But that's what you sow is what you will. It's a principle. Just like the farmer knows it. And not only does it work agriculturally, but it works in your life. What you sow, you will reap. And you know what else about the principle of sowing and reaping? Is you reap what you sow. So don't, don't show up. You, you planted corn, but now you mad. You mad because you really wanted tomatoes. That you're mad at the crop, that you 
but that, those were the seeds that you planted, right? And so you're mad because you're reaping a bunch of grief. You're reaping a bunch of heartache. You're reaching a bunch of, reaping a bunch of pain in your relationships, but what did you sow into it? You're mad because financially you're in a mess, but what did you, what did you sow financially? You're mad because your health isn't where it needs to be, but what did you sow into your health? So that principle is always working in the background of our life. Principles are always working in the backgrounds of your life. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you adhere to it or not, they are working. And the deal is that what I want us to understand is to take advantage of this principle of the path. How can I use this principle in my life so that I can get to the intended destinations that I'm trying to get to? That I can get to the place that God is calling me to and not think that it's going to happen just because I want it to happen or because I desire for it to happen or because I've been praying for it to happen or I've been believing for it to happen. Don't get me wrong. All of those things are necessary, but they're necessary while you're on the right road. Can't be going the wrong direction and you're praying that God's going to make it all right. The way he's going to make it all right is he's going to show you the path you need to be on. If you pack up your car today, you pack your suitcases, and you throw your bathing suit in there, and you throw your shorts in there, and you put the sunscreen in there, and you put your shades in there, and you put your favorite flip-flops in there, and you put your rubber ducky in there, and you load it into the car, and you put your Disney tickets in there that you ordered offline, and you get in the car, and you start driving on 95 North, you'll never get to Disneyland. But I pack my suitcases. I got my favorite bathing suit. I got my, my lucky flip-flops. I got everything I need for Disney. But if you're going the wrong way, you'll never get there. With the best of intentions, with all of the tickets and all the preparations that you made, but you're on the wrong road. And so many of us, that's what we do. We prepare for where we want to be. We have all these desires and all these plans, but then we get on the wrong path. And we're frustrated and we're mad and we're upset about why we aren't where we intend to be. It's because of the principle of the path. Jesus talks about this principle in Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 13. Matthew 7 and 13, Jesus talks about a path. He talks about roads. He talks about how they have predictable destinations. Matthew 7 and 13 says this, enter through the what gate? The narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to what? And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to what? Leads to life. And only a few find it. Here's what I want you to get today. You're on a path today. You're on a path today. You're on several paths. There are a number of paths that are going on in your life right now. And I'm wondering if you're consciously aware of where you're heading. Is there a gap between where you want to be and where you're heading? And what do I do to reconcile that gap? You see, the thing about uh, these paths, and Jesus was saying, he says, you know, most people want to go on the wide path. You want to know why most people want to go on the wide path? It's easier. Most people would rather take the road of least resistance. You know what that road looks like? That's the easy path. That's the shortcut. How many of you love a shortcut? You love a good shortcut. But you know what? Sometimes in life, the shortcut is the long way home. But, but Jesus says, Jesus says that's what the wide road looks like. It's the easy path. It's the shortcut, shortcut path. It's the path of least resistance. See, the wide path, you don't need a lot of discipline to walk on the wide path. You can meander on the wide path. You can party on the wide path. 
everybody's happy on the wide path. It's a good time happening. You don't need a lot of discipline. You don't need a lot of sacrifice on the wide path. You don't have to make the tough decisions on the wide path. There's room for you to do what you feel, whatever feels good to you. It's easy street on the, the wide path. The wide path is the popular path. That's the path that most of your friends are taking. That's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the path that everybody's talking about. That seems like the, the great way. But Jesus says, Jesus says, that path has a predictable destination. Then he says, there's another path. There's a narrow path. Now, this path isn't the easy path. On this path, you're going to experience some resistance. On this path, it's going to require some discipline. On, on this path, you're going to have to climb some hills on this path. Um, on this path, you're going to have to make some sacrifices on this. On this path, there are certain things that you, you could bring with you on the wide path that you can't bring with you on the, the narrow path. But he says if you choose this path, it has a very predictable destination. What financial path are you on? What relationship path are you on? What physical, what, what health path are you on? Jesus wanted them to, to consider what spiritual path were they on. Where are you going spiritually? Are you on the wide road? Or are you on the, the narrow road? You're on a path. And that path has a very predictable destination. And what I'm saying to you is your, 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 your direction determines your destination. And my question today is where are you heading? Some of us, we've buried our head in the sands. We're, we're, trying to, we're trying to pray over it. We're trying to pretend that it's not happening. We're trying to pretend we're going in a certain direction and we know that we're not. We're trying to dance over it. We're trying to procrastinate over it. You know what? I'm going to change direction next week. I'm going to change direction next month. I'm going to make a course correction next year. And Jesus is saying, you need to do it today. Because the path you're on has a very predictable destination. You've wasted enough time. I just wasted a few hours that night trying to get out of Philadelphia. But some of us waste seasons, years of our lives simply because we were on the wrong road, on the wrong path. Well, we intended to be here. I hoped to be here. I wanted to be here. This is what I... But direction trumps all of that. Where are you heading? Where are you going? What path are you on? I want you to think about that. I want you to consider that. Today my prayer isn't that, hey, you know, we're going to pray and all of a sudden everything in, the, in your life that's out of place, that, that you're the wrong, it's going to change overnight. No, no, no. My prayer is that you would get on the right path. That God would open your eyes. That God would give you the courage, that God would give you the strength, that you would be obedient to his voice when he says, get off of that path and get on this one. When he says it's going to require some discipline, it's going to require some, some pain, it's going to require some sacrifice, it's going to require you denying yourself of some things, that you would say, you know what, Jesus, whatever it takes, I want to get to the place that you've called me to. And the good news is, is that he's going to supply everything that you need along that path. It's not to say that it won't come with its difficulties, a challenge, or heartaches. But the good news is that he's on that path. See, there are a lot of people on the wide path. But only one matters. And I'd rather be walking alone with Jesus on the narrow path than with everybody on the wide path. How about you? How about you? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? I want you to take a moment to just consider the paths that you're on. I want you to think about your, the financial path you're on.